just as I said, just as I said, we are not teaching this because money had any value. Money has enough. That is not the reason. We are teaching this so that we we are abolishing the manipulation, the lies and deceptions. The body of Christ and many people are being, you know, threatening because of money. So we are teaching on this to free people from the bondage they are in and how they are, you know, declaring curses upon their life. We are teaching this to expose men whose aim and the reason is for money. And who are using money to mess up with people life. That's the reason why we are teaching this. To make clarifications. Okay, so we are not teaching this because money has any value. No. We are teaching this to bring clarification about tithing. Because that is the area many people have been deceived. And they have been cursed. Alright, so if you miss our last week teaching, I encourage you to go back to it. Because uh, if I can catch up quickly, last week we talk about... I gave an introduction of um, tithing and I talk about how tithing came about, the mind behind it, so that people will understand why tithing, why should we tithe. I talk also about the minute of tithe, which means tenth, and uh, that's what we talk about tithing. We talk about how tithe came about. And we saw all those things. We also talk about, okay, that it was the idea about tithing. And that is because uh, the Levite has no property. And that's why God commanded the, the, the tithe. Okay, so don't forget last week, the part one teaching we did. So that you not get confused in part two. All right. So, we also talk about, we, I think we concluded on tithing is not giving. We said tithing is not something you give, it's a law and it's a command. It's not something you do out of free will. It's a law. So last week, that's what we dealt with. Our way. So in case you miss it, please go to the channel, our YouTube channel, True Grace Ministry. Ministry and you, you catch up with part one. So today we are continuing with part two the next week i think next week we will end it in part three all right so today we are we are continuing part part two and our title still stand pain tight or uh pain tight is living in a curse or it is a curse to pay tight okay so today i want to i want to start from uh, where tight were taken that's what we are going to start with. Where tithes were taken, where should, or where, where, where was the people of uh, the Old Testament people? Where were they taking their tithe? Was it from their monthly salary? Where was it from their goods? Where, was it from their properties? So, if you understand, last week teaching on tithing, we said. Tithing is actually an idea because of the Levite has nothing. They don't have. They didn't have any property because when property was sheer, God commanded Moses or Aaron not to give them some. So tithing came about because of the Levite priesthood not giving anything. And we saw that we can compare this to today as we pass this. We cannot compare that to us because. Under the Old Testament, the Levites are commanded not to work. Under the New, the believer is commanded to do so, to work. All right, so there's different. All right, but today we'll be talking about tithes. Where, uh, where were they taken from? And these tithes were taken from spoils. Tithes were taken from spoils. S P O I L S. Okay, spoils. Something that, um, for example, when you won a war, any other thing you get is from the spoil. That's what I mean. So, the law or the covenant of Moses demanded for tithing because of the inheritance they got from the spoil of war. This means that tithing is a tax they were commanded to pay to the Levi, like we saw the other week. Because of all the inheritance the gods, uh, the gods uh, are out of the world, they won according 
to the Bible. And that's why I encourage you last week to read the entire book of um, Joshua to know about those wars and how they got the inheritance to help you understand how how the inheritance was shared and how they were commanded to pay tithe from them. All right. So the law demanded they must pay tithe out of the poor or out of the things they've gotten from the war or from the enemy they have conquered because tithe is taken from a spoil you got from your enemy when you defeat your enemy everything you 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 you, you have gotten from that war it is called a spoil okay now these uh, a, pre pre a principle was actually first established by the father uh, their father Abraham after he conquered certain kings. Now go to the book of um, Genesis chapter 14 and read it from verse 14 to 16. Genesis 14, 14 to 16. And we say tithe is taken or tithe Tithes were taken from spoil, or from a war, or from the people the people you have conquered, the nation you have conquered, any other thing you got from these nations, the Bible called it spoils. So tithe, they were commanded to tithe from the things they have gotten freely by winning the war. So tithe, tithe as tithe is usually taken from a spoil. Or from the enemy you conquer and the things you gain, the gold, the diamonds, the tithe must be taken from that those things, which is the spoil. So let's read Genesis chapter 14, 14 to 16. When, when Abraham heard that his nephew Lord had been captured, he mobilized the 318 trained men who had been born into his household. Then he pursued Kedoloma's army until he caught up with them at Den. There he divided his men and attacked during the night. Kedoloma's army fled, but when Abraham chased them as far as Hobah, north of Damascus, Abraham recovered all the goods that had been taken, and he brought them back to his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. Amen. Do you see that? So after Abraham conquered the king of uh, is it Kedol Leme, he brought the goods he took from the war because he won the war. Okay, so the Bible says when he returned, the king of Salem, Melchizedek, met him and brought him bread and wine, and he blessed Abraham. Now the, this king Melchizedek served as a high prince unto God. Remember that. Okay, so after he blessed Abraham, the Bible says Abraham gave him tenth, tenth of everything he got from where? The war, not from his prosperity. Remember, Abraham was rich before he went to that war. Yet yeah, he never paid a single a dime from his prosperity. Pay attention because we said what? Tithe must be taken from a poor. Something you get, you got, you have gotten freely from the enemy you have conquered okay so the bible says abraham gave him tenth of everything he got from the war just as it was established under the law of moses so uh, moses that tenth of everything gotten from the war must be given to the levites who were praying chosen by god so you need to pay attention here tithe must be taken from a spoil you've gotten from a wall and i'll tell you the reason behind that now let's go to uh continue from verse 18 genesis 14 from verse 18 to 20 genesis 14 from verse 18 to 20 so where were tithe tithe taken from where were these people pay their tithe from Tithe were paid from a spoil. That's why you will never see Abraham pay tithe out of his prosperity. The things he have gotten and the things he got, you have never, you will never read anywhere Abraham pay tithe out of his prosperity. No word. What he did was offering. He did offering out of the 
blessing and the things God bless him with but there is no way you read in the Bible Abraham paid tithes out of his blessings nowhere why because the word tithe must come from something you have gotten from a wall it means one tenth so tithe is not something you take from your monthly salary it is not something you take from your prosperity it is something that must come out of from the spoil you have gotten from a wall so tithe is being taken from a spoil please take note of that okay now genesis chapter 14 18 to 20 and Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and a priest of God the Most High, brought Abraham some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abraham with this blessing. Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has defeated your enemies for you. And Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. Amen. Now, one question, okay? One question. Yes. Why did Melchizedek take tithe from Abraham? The answer, like we say, is in, when you read the verse 20, it said, the answer is in verse 20, when it's, which uh, said like this. Look at verse 20 of uh, Genesis 14. The reason why Abraham gave 10, listen carefully, it's because of verse 20 when he said, and blessed be the most high, which had delivered your enemies into your hand and because he said this abraham gave him tens of all now when you check the word tens sorry when you check the word he said abraham gave tithes of all now check the word tithes not only one thing so what abraham did is he took tithe from every single spot he got from the kings so if you got this one from this king, he take 10, 10 from this, 10 from this, 10 from that. Alright, that's why he said 10. He take uh, tithes, different, different tithes from all the goods he have gotten. Okay, so Melchizedek reminded Abraham that it was not his strength. It was not his strength that defeated those kings. But it was the blessing of God upon his life that empower him to defeat those kings okay so Melchizedek met Abraham as God demanding for them as his own for helping him defeat his enemy remember what we read in Leviticus okay the law says the Jews must pay one tenth of the spoil they've got from their enemy and give it to whom the prince serving in the house okay so Melchizedek reminded abraham that the reason of defeating these kings was not because of his strength it was because of the strength of god so god through Melchizedek met abraham and he demanded one tenth for helping him defeating his enemy so he took he took uh, the tithe from the spoil and gave it to Melchizedek. So Abraham, before he went, like I said, before he went to the war, he was very rich man. Remember that with cattle and so many things. He was a rich man. Okay? Before Abraham went to the war, he was so rich and such demand did not happen. God did not demand a tithe from Abraham take note he said in the book of joshua that that tithe belongs to him because he helped the israelite during the time of moses and Aaron to conquer nations and they possess lands and these events which occurred during the time of abraham was the same thing he established under the levitical order okay and all came out of the spoil they got from the war so tithe is taken from the spoil they got from the war not from their prosperity not from their riches that's the reason why from the journey of when they journey from egypt after they were redeemed all the things they've gotten from egypt 
they pay no tithe from it. Everything these guys got from Egypt, there is nowhere in scripture you can see that God demanded tithes. Tithes was tithes were only demanded after they won a war and all the inheritance they got in. So tithe is a term. Tithe is a term taken from a spoil, gotten from a war. You need to understand that's very important. So tithe is not something you take out of your prosperity or property, but a tenth of what you've gotten from war. The inheritance they took from their enemies brought forth the tithe. However, if they haven't gotten anything from a war, it means they have nothing to tithe from. And this is the reason why you cannot see that the Jews, when they were slaves in Egypt, they were not tithing to anyone. When Moses led them through the wilderness, they were not commanded to tithe because they had nothing to tithe out from. Despite the fact that they had their lambs, gold, goats, goats, cows, and so on, and all the things they got from Egypt, they tithed nothing from it. So nowhere in those you know incidents where they commanded to tithe until they started conquering other nations okay so the more they conquer nations the more they you know they they increase in possession okay and this is the reason why the law came that they must pay tithe out of the things the lands and the things they've gotten from a war to the levite so tithe were taken from a spoil gotten from a war that's why i said abraham was so rich in material things but there was nowhere in the bible says abraham tithe take no tithe is for the prince who had no inheritance so what abraham was doing when he was rich he was only giving sacrifices to god or offering only offering to god he was not tithing and this offering was according to his free will according to what kind of offering he wanted to give there was nothing like tithing and you can see that abraham only tithed once because he went to war once apart from that tithe you never see anywhere in the scripture that abraham tithe he paid tithe once why because he only went to war once the jews were told or commanded to pay to continue to pay because they were continuing you know when it was and you know the lands they were dwelling in were land they took from uh they took from from their enemies and they were planting things on it and the lands were bearing fruit onto them so the tithing continue because they have in those lands as their inheritance So like I said, Abraham only tied once to Melchizedek out of the spoil he got from the war. So Abraham never paid or gave tithe every month and every year as the Israelites were commanded to do under the covenant of Moses. Abraham tied out of the spoil as a sign. Now listen, the reason behind the tithing, another reason is because Abraham tied out of the spoil as a sign that God has given him victory over his enemies not out of his pros not out of out of uh his pro prosperity as a sign that god bless him tithing is not a sign that god bless me it is a sign that god has won has helped me to win a war the pain of tithe under the old testament spoke of the strength of god upon them or a sign that god was the one who fought for them that was the tithe means so when they gave tenth of everything what that tenth is speaking is that it is god who gave us the strength to win so tithe speak of the strength of god tithe is a sign of winning a war and it is a sign that this war that we are won it is god who help us that's why it said the tithe belong to god because it speaks of victory 
tithe identify God as their helper in winning a war. If you want to know the why the tithing, it also identify God as their strength of winning a war. So tithing to God, the tithe stand for the strength of God. That's why the tithing belong to God. That's why a tenth was demanded to give to God who sorry a tenth uh, was demanded to give to the prince who were serving in the temple of God okay so as I said I have not explained Malachi chapter 3 yet but I know you 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 now understand why God said they are robbing him if tithe is pointing to the victory or if tithe is pointing that uh, the, the, the meaning of tithe simply means it is God who help us. Tithe speaks of the strength of God, okay? The meaning of one thing, the one thing speaks of the strength of God. If that means the tenth belong to God, because it's a sign that God is our strength who help us to win a war. And that's the reason why God demands tenths to be paid, okay? And when they refuse to pay it, God said, you are robbing me. So tithe is a sign or a token that they warn their enemy. So when you pay tithe, you acknowledge that they are, when they pay tithe, they acknowledge the creator as their strength because tithe speaks of the strength of God over their enemies. It speaks of victory. So they send their tithe to the prince and those tithes spoke of their victory over their enemies. That's the meaning of tithe. Why offering speaks of thanksgiving or God's goodness towards you. So there's a difference between tithing and offering. Tithing is taken from a spore offering. Offering is taken from the goodness of God. Everything you owe, that is offering. An offering is according to what you will. Tithing is a tent. It's not according to what you will. It is not by your will. It is not by your desire. It is a demand. Why offering is according to what you will. So Abraham paid tithe once. Why? Because he went for war once. He won a war once. And after paying that tithe, you never, re you never read anywhere that Abraham was paying tithe to anyone again. Are we get finished? Hence, like I said, Abraham, Abraham gave more offering anytime he saw the goodness of God in his life. Abraham did not tie to thank God. He didn't tie to thank God for blessing him, but he tied to prove his victory to the king of Salem. Abraham was blessed materially even before he went to that war, like I said, and he never tied a penny out of his goodness out of the goodness and the blessing God has he never paid because we said tithe must be taken from a spoor not from your blessing not from your prosperity not from your salary okay tithing is not taken from a salary because the word tithe must come from a spoor a war you have won because it speaks of a victory it speaks of the strength of God however offering is actually taken from all the things God bless us to say father thank you that's the reason why Abraham gave more offering but he paid tithe once are we getting it guys Abraham was blessed material even before materially even before he went to that war and he never tied a penny you need to understand the word tithe you can just take it from your salary it is not salary thing it is a thing that must be taken from war because it speak of the victory hence when the Israelites refused to send their tithe to the Levite who were serving in the temple of God a warning came that if they refused to bring their tithe God who allow the enemy to attack them again why because we said tithes is taken from the enemy's property the things the enemies they conquer from their enemies the tithe is taken from that remember that because tithe speaks of the strength of god tithe speak of the strength of god uh to hold the israelite against their enemies so when they refuse to bring the tithe you can see that god began to tread them with their enemies now let's read malachi chapter 3 verse 6 and 7 
Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 and 7. Why? Because tithing is taken from what you have what you have gained from the enemy. So when this is Israelite refused to send the tithe into the house of God, you can see that God was threatening them that I'm going to make sure your enemy conquer you. Because why? The tithe is taken from the properties of the enemies, not from the riches, not from your bank accounts, not from your salary, but it is taken from the enemy's goods as a sign of the strength of God against the enemies of Israel. So when they refuse to bring the tithe, you can see that God used the enemy as a threat to them. Now let's read Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 and 7. I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven armies. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Now, pause here. Listen. He said... Even from this day of your father, ye, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. He said, return unto me. And they asked him, how do we return to you? Now, how did they deviate it? How did they deviate from the ordinances of God? They stopped bringing their tithe, which is the, the legal command. Remember last week we talked about tithing is a commandment. Okay, so they stopped bringing the tithing, so they deviated from the ordinances of God. So they stopped bringing their tithing to the house of God, which were the inheritance of the Levite, because the law says they must give tenth of what they took as spoils from war by the help of God to the Levite who were chosen to serve in the house of God. They turned away from obeying that law of tithing, and uh, you know, they were obeying other laws. Hence, Malachi chapter 3 says they are cursed with a curse because James made it clear in his letter that obeying the 99 laws, obeying the 99 laws and breaking one is a curse. So when they refuse to pay their tithe to the Levite, yet obeying the rest of the laws, the Bible says. They were cursed. They were robbing God by not sending God's part of the shear, which was the tent to the lever. Remember the shears happened in the book of Joshua. And the shears of the Levite was the titan. Now read from verse 8 and 9. The same Malachi chapter 3, 8 and 9. To read from verse 8 to 12. Okay? Read from verse 8 to 12. So we've seen that we said what? The tithe is a strength. It's a sign of the strength of God. Okay, it means God's strength. So the tithe is the shear of the lever. That is the lever shield. Okay. So when they refused, you know, the Bible says they have deviated from the ordinances of God, and the ordinances of God is the tithing, the law of tithing. They refused to obey that law, and that is why we will see that God began to tread them with their enemies. Now let's let's continue from verse eight. It says, Will a mere man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, How are we robbing you? In tithes and in offering. You are under a curse. Your whole nation, because you are robbing me, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that they may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land says the lord almighty amen do you understand that he said you have robbed me and because of this you are cursed he said you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation and how he said they should bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be means in his house so you can even see that even a titan is not just money it's about things okay 
and he said once they bring the tithe into the house he will rebuke the devourer or their enemies all those people who are who, you know who wanted to defeat them he's to defeat them he said he will help them to to defeat them and he, sh he sh they shall not be destroyed so these people were their enemies dwelling with them so god was telling them that if they refuse to give him his time then their enemies will overcome them because it was his strength they were using not their own power that's why he called them mere men and we said that tithe means what the strength of god that's what the, the word tithe means it means the strength of god that's why you can see that Melchizedek made Abraham to understand that it is not your strength that make you win this war. It is the almighty God who helped you, okay? So the word tithe simply means a strength of God against your enemy. So the law these people were breaking was that they stopped sending the tithe into the house of God. This is why God was telling them that I will make sure your enemies overcome you. So... You can see that when they refuse or when they disobey God, God allow his their God allow their opponents to defeat them on the land because they disobeyed. Anytime the Israelites disobey, you can see that God releases their enemy to defeat them. Okay? So Malachi chapter 3 has nothing to do with the body of Christ. And it, it is a shame for we as a gospel ministers to be quoting it. We don't have any tie to tithe because our calling is no a carnal calling by spiritual calling and has nothing to do with the flesh and blood we have never gone for any war to take tithe from we don't tithe we only give and part three will be talking about giving all right we are not tithers we are givers therefore tithe were collected out of what was gotten from a wall to give it to the prince as a sign of victory which become which become the, 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 the inheritance to the prince okay so tithe is a sign of victory okay which is an inheritance of the prince service and doing the service of God and if you have never won a war like I said then you have no tithe to give to anyone on this earth tithing out of your own money or prosperity is living in ignorance because you don't understand the scripture tithing must be taken from a spoil that's why i said ask people who talk about tithing how many times did abraham tithe just once why because he only went to war once he only won war once Tithing is not matter, something you take from monthly salary. So Abraham did more offering, but when it comes to tithing, he did only once because tithing is a result of war. Why offering is a result of the goodness of God upon our life. So when Abraham see how good God God was to him, he, the Bible says he take a lamb and he sacrifice, he sacrifice offering to God. So offering, we do offering because of God's goodness upon our life. We see how the God, God has been good so, has been good unto us and then we do offering, alright? But when it comes to tithing, it is something that must be taken from a spoil. And if you don't have a spoil to give, to take your tithe from, then you have no tithe to give. by finishing this teaching you should know better and help other people who are being threatened up and down about this tithing thing all right now quickly christ when he came he put an end to tithing now go to the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 4 now we talk about tithing being a law and last week we talked about the the, the idea behind tithing was because when God when God went to help these um, Jews to win the war, okay, the the, the the inheritance were being shared and the Levites were left out and then God established a new law says, out of all the good the Israelites got in from the war, 
one ten should be taken every month and give to the Levite. And it has to do with either crops, whatever it is, they take one tenth to give to the Levites. And the Bible says the tenth is the inheritance of the Levite. So God decided to give to give the Levite who are serving in the house the tenth. Okay. Now the reason behind Malachi chapter three is because the Israelite uh, disobey that law they refuse to obey the, the agreement they break the agreement and then they refuse to send the titan to war to the house of god all right and then god threat them with the enemies okay because the titan was taken from from what the spoil they got from the enemy so you can see god telling them that i'll make sure if you don't bring the tithe i'll make sure your enemies defeat you because they are eating the titan as well and so the idea behind titan is because tithing must be something you take from a sport and if you have not gone for a war to win a war or you have not gone to a, a war to win a war and conquer your enemy and, and get all their properties and goods, then I have to tell you that you have no tithe to pay. So tithe is not something you pay out of your prosperity or your your blessings or whatever. Tithe must be taken from a spoil. That's why, like I said, Abraham was so rich and he paid no penny out of his riches, okay? So if you are paying tithe of your salary, it's just you being ignorant because tithing must be taken from a spoil you have gotten from a wall by offering is taken from the things God bless us with so we give offering as a thanksgiving of God's goodness upon our life so there's different between giving offering and giving tithe tithe is abolished because these times we have no people are not fighting wars so that you go and conquer lands and conquer people to take everything they own and then give tithe to God if you don't take a law so dealt with you so we said when Christ came to the world he puts an end to the law of tithing now let's read Romans chapter 10 verse 4 Romans chapter 10 verse 4 for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes amen so Christ Jesus is the end of the law to everyone that believe in Jesus okay so whosoever believe in Christ Christ is the end of the law of tithing he abolished that law of tithing so now quickly first what is a curse a curse is a state of a person who is unrighteous a curse is a person of a person who is unrighteous okay so um the person pack unrighteous lack righteousness which stop he saw her blessing and that's what the bible called curse so before the coming of christ people were cursed because they were under the law because we say a curse is a state okay so the bible revealed that christ came and ended all the law that brought curses and he fulfilled them so to understand for example to understand you know how jesus christ fulfilled the old testament laws i recommend my book entering god's rest okay i have a book on it entering god's rest read that book he has a lot to to tell you how jesus christ fulfilled those law okay so in the book of matthew jesus made it clear that until the laws were fulfilled not a dot can be taken from it so when you read that book you will understand how jesus fulfilled that law so christ jesus has ended the law of tithing given by angels and it's uh, uh given by angel and was established by moses okay so christ took that law and he nailed it back to the cross for the jews to be free from that law of or from the tithing mentality because he put an end to the levite order now please go to the book of uh, hebrews chapter 7 and we are reading from verse uh, 1 to 10 all right hebrews chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10 so when jesus christ came he put an end to the levitical order christ jesus has ended the law of tithing and he established the spirit of giving the Leviticus order is now dead. At the arrival of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ ended the Levite order when he came on earth and he established a new covenant. When Jesus Christ appeared, he put an end 
to the priesthood of Levitical order before God and he established a new priesthood. Not just one priesthood, new priesthood. Many priests, which is you and me, according to the operation of the Holy Spirit. So if we have to take tithe, then it's like I have to take tithe from uh, 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 Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I have to take from me. You have to take from this one. If tithe must continue, we are all prince now because Christ made us prince. So this means that Christ is the end of the priesthood under the law. His blood has changed everything, guys. His blood has changed everything. And the covenant of Moses and everything that it, it requires, Jesus put an end to it and he stamped it. The tithing commandment is dead, meaning it has ended. And we have a new prince, and this prince does not demand tithe. And that's why the New Testament, you cannot see where the apostles and the disciples demanded from this teacher because tithe is something you take from a, a, a scroll, which a law has been established on them because they, they own those lands, they got freely. But when Christ came, he put an end to that order. Now let's read Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10. Okay, it says, For this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, priests of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth as part of all this, first being translated king of righteousness and also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God remains a priest continually. Now, Consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil. And now, pause here. Over... Pause here. Listen very carefully. I love the way scripture put itself clear. But we ministers trying to remove certain words from the scripture. Listen. From verse 4 says, it said, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of what? His property? No. Check the scripture there gave the tent of the spoils you need to pay attention here tithe is taken from a spoil so you see how scripture put things correctly and put words by word but men of god want to remove they say you pay tithe out of your salary you pay tithe out of this and you are ignorant and your ignorance is what they pass through to take from you he said abraham took the tenth from the spoils that's why he put the word spoil he didn't say abraham took he never said abraham took the tithe from his prosperity no way you can see anywhere in the scripture abraham tied out of the blessing god bless him the inheritance the the, the things he got the bible says abraham was so rich no way he paid tithe out of out of his richness the tithe came out from a spore. So please pay attention. Tithe is something you take from a spore. And if you don't have a spore, you have no tithe to pay. Everything God bless you with is only offering. An offering is a gratitude heart to God and say thank you. So there's difference between offering and tithing. With tithing is a law, it's a command. It is not by your free will. It is not what you choose according to your heart to give. He said, tithe say. The word says you must pay tenth. But when it comes to offering, it is according to what your heart purpose. So there is difference between tithing and offering. With offering, it is according to your own will, how much you want to give. But with ten, with tithe, it is by law and it is tenth. So you can see verse 4, he said, Abraham took the tithe from a spoil pay attention because many of these men remove this word spoil from it and that's why they are troubling you cursing you telling you must pay time because you work every month that is not how it's supposed to to do give offering out of what you gain freely as a thanksgiving to god not tithing okay let's continue Verse 5 And indeed those who are 
of the sons of Levi who received the, the priesthood have a commandment to receive the tithes from the people according to the law. Now pause here before you continue. Brethren, they pause have... here. Now pay attention to the scripture being ready said. And verily, they that are of the son of who? Levi. No Gentiles who become believers. He said, Those who are commanded to take tithe are who? They are called who? The sons of Levi. The sons of Levi who receive the office of priesthood have a commandment to take tithe of the people according to what? The law, not according to grace. The sons of Levi who receive the office of priesthood are commanded by law to take tithes. Well, the scripture is so clear, we just don't read. That's why many people are using the scripture to bully, to steal, to insult, to and they are the same people you can see them proclaiming curse. You know how how selfish and greedy men are something that doesn't belong to you that's what they want to curse people and money that doesn't belong somebody own money that he refused to pay tight you start cursing proclaiming these are men of greedy full of bitterness and to know whether these people are just there for ministry, money is because they are full of greediness when money is mentioned and you don't want to give they want to proclaim curses on you because of your own money. Man, guys, this is crazy. Look at the scripture says again. He said, he said, verily, they that are of the sons of Levi. Not believers. It's the sons of Levi who receive the office of priesthood have a commandment, like we saw last week in part one in, in, in the book of Leviticus, it, that the commandment, the law was established. They have the commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, not according to the gospel. And why that happened? Because we said when the inheritance is being shared, the Levite has nothing now. Let me ask you, what inheritance have we received? What inheritance has Christ shared with us? What natural inheritance has Christ has shared for us for us to be paying tithe from? We need to ask question. These people have inheritance being shared to them. We have zero. We don't we didn't have anything shared to us. We have nothing carnally shared to us that we are told that okay, now that this thing have been shared, some pastors were left out, and we must pay to them. Look at the scripture where we read the last week. It was true, they, they must pay the tithe out of the inheritance they receive. What did we receive? We didn't receive anything after coming to Christ. What physical inheritance have we received to pay tithe from? And everything these ministers are doing, we're all out of content of scripture. It is not according to the Bible and it is upside down. Now I'll continue reading. And indeed, those who are our sons of the Levi who receive the priesthood have the commandment to receive the tithes from the people according to the law. And that is from their brethren, though they have come from the Leons of Abraham, but to whose gene genealogy is not derived from them, received tithe from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all the contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he live. Even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the leons of his father when Melchizedek met him. Amen. So what you cannot see, if you really take your time to study the scripture, you can see that the writer of Hebrews is trying to argue on how the king of Salem, which is Melchizedek, took tithe from Abraham. What he, what he was saying that he was trying to say what Melchizedek did was wrong. Because he said Melchizedek is not a Levite. That is what he's trying to tell you in these few scriptures from, um, from verse um, 6 when he said, but he said, he whose descendant is not counted from them received tithe of Abraham. Meaning, he was trying to argue that Melchizedek was not supposed to receive the tithing from Abraham. Because he's a prince 
because he said the tithe must be received from by Kana men, which is the Levite, why Melchizedek is a man like Christ. So you can see that the, the writer of Hebrews was trying to argue on how the king of Salem, who is Melchizedek, took tithe from Abraham in Genesis 14. But you can see that he didn't, when you read uh, Genesis 14, Genesis 14 tells us that it was Abraham who gave the tithe okay when you read genesis 14 it tells you that it was abraham who gave the tithe but the spirit of truth is telling us here that it was Melchizedek who took the tithe from abraham now basing on this content the writer is saying men who cannot die are not to take time so he was trying to say what Melchizedek did was actually wrong because he was trying to argue on that because it is Levi who is supposed to collect tithe, no Melchizedek. However, Melchizedek did that because tithe is for men who can die under the Levitical order. So men with imperfection under the law are commanded to take tithe not prince like Melchizedek because he was a picture of Christ. He was supposed not to take the tithe. That's what the book of Hebrews is trying to argue here. And many people want to explain it differently to us, okay? So uh, that is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to say, okay? So recall what I said. Melchizedek took tithe from Abraham because Melchizedek represented God's strength who helped Abraham okay to win the war so he appeared to take the ten from the spoils abraham got from the war because it was the lord who won the war through abraham so even levi also paid tithe through abraham because all tribes of israel were in abraham but the levite was separated to take tithe because the princehood has been given to that tribe which is why the levit the levite were choosing to be prince forever are we getting it okay so we need to understand this that titan is taken from a spore and a tithe must be take uh, a tithe it is only the levite who were commanded to take tithes because it was by law. Guys, are we getting the understanding? Now go back to Hebrew chapter 7 and read it from verse 11 to 16. Oh, sorry, to 19. Hebrew chapter 7, verse 11 to 19. And we are talking about how Christ put an end to the tithing all right so you can see that the scripture we read so far is arguing that Melchizedek is not qualified to take tithing because tithing is given to men kana men under the levite order who were supposed to die so Melchizedek is a picture of christ so the, the book of the writer of hebrew was trying to you know argue on how Melchizedek took tithe from abraham that is what the scripture is saying all right, now let's read our Hebrew chapter 7 from verse 11 to 17. Uh, the same chapter, Hebrews 11, 7. Hebrew chapter 11, verse, sorry, Hebrew chapter 7, Hebrews 7, 11 to 19. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not to be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood had been changed. Of necessity, there is also a change of the law. Now, pause here. Pause here. Thank you. So the Bible is telling you that if there if there is any good thing in the Leviticus priesthood, there is no need for another prince. Okay? And verse 12 he said, if the priesthood have changed, 
then there has been a change of law now continue for he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar for it is evident that our lord arose from judah of which the tribe of moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood and it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of melchizedek there arises another priest who has come and not according to the law of a fleshly commandment but according to the power of an endless life for he testifies you are a priest forever according to the order of melchizedek for on the one hand there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness for the law made nothing perfect on the other hand there is the bringing of the better hope through which we draw near to god Amen. So we have seen there have been change of rule, right? Jesus is from the Judah, not from the Levite. Now you understand why the gospel never demand tithe. All right, for somebody to take tithe from you, he needs to go back to the Old Testament, and that's why they have Old Testament, or Old Testament, and they focus on the Old Testament. Now we all see that the priesthood of the Levite has been changed after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the law has changed. The law of tithing is now dead because the priesthood has changed. Jesus Christ is now the prince and he has established a new covenant of the spirit who give birth to more princes. Better than that of the Levites. Now we are all prince. So if you want to talk about tithe, who will pay to who? In this covenant of Christ, there is nothing like human war to conquer someone's lands and property and then uh, start tithing from it. Christ Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he came to make all people one unto God. He is not here to separate us like that of the Old Testament law. Jesus Christ is here to make all people one unto God. So that all may worship God in the spirit and in truth. So that middle wall of prediction has been brought down. And we are all one people on earth to seek the true God by faith. Our war now is not about flesh and blood to go and conquer people's lands. And get their things and tie to God. Our war now is to make sure truth is established in our heart. So the law of tithing has been abolished, and Jesus has made all people one. Now go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and read from verse 11 to 22. Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 11 to 22. Jesus Christ has made all people one under the Old Testament. There were enemies upon enemies, so the Israelites has enemy. They have to fight, win war, and out of the wars they won. They have to pay tithe of it, out of it. In the New Testament, the Scripture says like this: God is in Christ doing what, reconciling the world unto Himself. Under the New Testament, the Bible tells you like this: Love all people. So where do we get the tithe from? Where do we go to war and win and pay out from? So there have been a lot of changes and that's why I'm saying you have no one to pay a tithe or a dime. Because there's no war to win. Alright? We are people of giving. We give offering freely. Because in the New Testament it's about offering, not tithing. Now read Ephesians chapter 2 verse, from verse 11 to 22. Therefore, remember that you were once Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus for he himself is our peace separation having abolished in his flesh and the enmity that is in the law of commandments contained in the ordinances so 
has to create himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom he, in whom the world the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Amen. You can see the unity, the oneness. Okay, now we are no more Gentiles to be fought. Okay, so the Bible says Christ has reconciled, made all people one. All right. Under the Old Testament, they, they were no one. That's why you see the Jews chasing people out of their lands and the things they've gotten and they said they should pay tithe from it. So there is no more war where you will go and conquer somebody's inheritance and then tithe from it unto God through the to the prince. Okay? If you do that today, you'll be jailed because this new covenant doesn't support war or stealing. This time we are made one and we who believe are prince made by Jesus Christ unto God. We are to go and preach peace to the world. The prince made under the new covenant are rather to feed the poor and clothe the homeless, especially in the church of God. The prince made under the old uh, under the new covenant of Jesus Christ are to praise God. These are not Kana prince like that of the old testament to be demanding tithe from people you know paying tithe is tithing is kind of giving is spirituality now you may be like what do you mean tithing is kind of paying tithe is just kind of because it's from kind of law okay but giving is spiritual god is a giver all right now why do i say tithing is kind of because tithing you are forced to do whether you like it so you may be angry bitter but you still have to pay so it was all pay out of carnality out of your own will but giving is spiritual because giving is free will are we getting it so the lord jesus has made us praise now go to first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 and revelation 1 5 and 6 First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Now we are all priests. Because according to the Old Testament, the tithes, it is the prince that must receive. So your pastors have no legal right to be taking tithe from you as a prince. If we have to enforce tithing, then all of us need to receive. Where, where are we going to receive? From who? Alright? So let's read First Peter 2. 9 and revelation 1 5 and 6 okay but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light go ahead go to revelation 1 5 and 6 all right there's now the scripture says you are a royal not just a princehood a royal princehood how in the world will you be taking tithe from a royal princehood and holy nation a peculiar person why in how in the world will you be doing that because as we've read in the old testament tithe is paid to a prince now we are not just prince we are a royal one the royal princehood a peculiar princehood all right so as you can see the Lord Jesus abolished the Levite order, and now the new one we have is that He made us all prince. Now, Revelation 1 to 5 and 6, Revelation chapter 1, 5 and 6. And 
from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to whom who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he has made us kings and priests to God and the Father. To him be the glory and dominion. Amen. All right. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. So the verse he said, he has made you kings and prince. How can a king and prince be paying tithes? Hmm? Our, our prince, prince were the one who's supposed to receive. And the Bible says you are made. All of the body of Christ is made prince. Okay. So therefore, guys, since the princehood has changed, the law that demand for tithing is dead and we are now praised unto God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by uh, that, weak, that weak law established under the Levite order. And that is why it is wrong to take tithe from people. Throughout the episode, the apostles never thought on tithe. Do you know why? Because... We don't have such law under the New Testament. The Bible says we should look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Meaning we are to follow how Jesus did ministry when he walked on earth. And since he did not collect tithes from anyone, we are not to collect any tithe. And the Apostle Paul made it very clear that the foundation has already been built already. So if Jesus built a foundation that has no tithe, then why would people be taking and be cursing people on it? Apostle Paul made it clear that if any man preach any gospel we have not preached, let him be cursed. Now you understand the reason why I said paying tithe is living in a curse. Let me make that clear for you, then I close, okay? Why is paying tithe living in a curse? Because one, Apostle Paul made it clear that if anyone preach a gospel to you, which they have not preached, let that man or that woman be cursed. He never say, if, if anyone say what the Bible didn't say, we say what they have not preached. So many of these preachers say that if you don't pay tithe, you are under a curse by quoting the book of Malachi chapter 3 out of ignorance. And until we sit down and study the scripture ourselves in content and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, these people will never stop misleading us. The truth of the matter is, paying tithe or taking tithe from someone is rather a curse. Curse simply means lack of spiritual blessing which has to do with divine knowledge and soundness in the spirit. Now let me make this simple because when you say curse, people think like me, maybe I may not have money. I may not have money. No. Living in a cursed life is not an absent or lack of material things. That's why evil people have material things. The abundance of material things is not a blessing as some people claim. They say, well, you know, I pay tithe, that's why I'm blessed financially. No. Living in a curse simply mean you don't have the soundness of the truth it's not an absence of material thing because as i'm saying there are many evil people who are material materially comfortable as a result of what they acquire from their evil deeds so material things is not a sign of blessing and lack of material things is not a sign of curse okay a curse is the inability to walk in truth that is a curse it is walking in the blindness of your heart. It's a curse. All right. So in Romans chapter one, you can we can because of time I'm not going to read that, but you can see that the Bible says they are living in the curse because their heart has been darkened. This is the reason why tight preachers and tight collectors are cursed. Because they are blinds in the heart without knowledge. That's why they are filled with a bit, they are filled with bitterness. Okay. So God also gave you know them to the deprived deprived mind, so that they would do what they like, deceiving people. That is what it means. People are living in a curse. The Lord Jesus Christ also tell us that blessing is knowledge. Blessing is not thing. Blessing is knowledge. Now go to the book of um. 
in the NIV version go to um, Matthew chapter 13 I'm closing very soon Matthew 13 verse 10 to 17 Matthew chapter 13 verse 10 to 17 blessing is knowledge so living in a curse is living in ignorance living a life of a curse is living without the soundness of the truth living in the light of, of a curse is living in deceiving people it's not abundant it's not an absence of material thing or abundance of material it's, it's just living in ignorance and living in deception that is a cursed life all right because knowledge is a blessing now because of time let's just oh okay you just read it read matthew chapter 13 verse 10 to 17 okay the disciples came to him and asked why do you speak to the people in parables and he replied because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them now pause here whoever pause here he said whoever has pause here he said knowledge of the secret of the kingdom do you see how powerful knowledge is how beautiful he said knowledge is a secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you not them so knowledge is a blessing so when a preacher doesn't have this knowledge and yelling on tight it's just living a life of ignorance and ignorance is a curse now continue from verse 12 whoever has will be given more and they will have abundance now pause here. Does pause here here is not talking about material things he's talking about knowledge because remember from verse 11 he's talking about knowledge he said whosoever has has will be given more of it and they will have an abundance so what will you be in a what will you have in abundance knowledge knowledge is blessing lack of knowledge is a curse so these preachers living in ignorance they are living a life of a curse that's why apostle paul said if we if they preach what we have not preached let them be pre let them be cursed because what they are preaching is error and error is living a life of a curse this is the reason why they are filled with bitterness and anger when someone refused to pay the tithe and how is the behavior of preachers who, who call it tithe when you refuse to pay can't you see how they curse people out they are filled with bitterness and see the preachers who collect tithes and all our religious movement today they are filled with curses why because they are cursed what they have in them is what they speak they don't have blessing so they curse because they themselves they are cursed now continue so they don't have the knowledge and the later they have the bible said they will take it from them let's continue whosoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them this is why i speak to them in parables those seeing they do not see those hearing they do not hear or understand now, in here. them is fulfilled pause the here. prophecy thank you so you know many people mis uh, abuse the scripture it's like a wow, jesus is talking about material no he's talking about knowledge you need to see the value of knowledge the beauty of it. he said whosoever does not have knowledge the letter they have will be taken from from them it says seeing what they have he says even what they have will be taken from them this is why i speak to them in parables so you see the knowledge which we are sharing today which i'm sharing tonight is a worth it's an inheritance all right it is, it is an inheritance you need to receive it it is something that will make you rich it will make you blessed because not everyone have it knowledge is an inheritance knowledge is blessing knowledge is worth knowledge is a spiritual worth please have it it's a secret of the kingdom things are not inheritance that's why you die and leave things but when you die with knowledge you go with it until you die you will never understand what i'm saying when you die in knowledge you go with knowledge but when you die you can't go with the house you cannot go with the man you married to you cannot go with the children you give birth to you cannot go with the money in your bank account you leave everything here but you don't go away without knowledge everything you receive every knowledge you receive here you go with it 
because the knowledge you are receiving here is, is, is getting stored in your soul. So you don't die and leave knowledge be, behind. You die and go with knowledge. So all the knowledge we acquire on this earth, when you die, it will all become alive over there. So guys, the only worth that you die and you don't leave behind is the word of Christ. Is the word. It is the worth that you will not die and leave behind. This is the reason why invest in knowledge. Because everything you are suffering for, you will die and leave behind. But with knowledge, you die and go with it. So knowledge is spiritual worth. Invest in it. Make yourself rich before you leave this earth. Continue. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will ever be seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become collapsed and hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are those whose eyes they see and your ears those who hear for truly i tell you many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it amen that is this is the reason why i take pride in knowledge not to boast on people but to boast in me that thank god father i have a little knowledge invest in knowledge the bible say but blessed are your eyes because they can now see see how many we are we are just few here learning the rest are maybe somewhere else okay knowledge is blessing people who don't see they say look i said blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear you are blessed knowledge is worth and he continued to say for truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, what you are hearing today. People long and they cry for it, but they didn't have it. Today you have it, and this is the reason why you. This is the reason why you are blessed. And he continued to say in verse 15, and he said because he spoke in parable because he doesn't want these guys to come and be healed. Healed from what? Healed from their ignorance and from the curse they are walking in. So Apostle Paul also made it very clear that those who go back to the things of Moses shall remain blind for the rest of their life on earth. But those who walk with Jesus Christ by the Spirit shall experience life and peace. So they shall see well and walk in liberty. And this liberation and knowledge is only found in Christ. Now, go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14 and 18. I'm closing very soon. I just want to end it and then we close. Okay. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 14 and 18. The only knowledge you need, the only way, the knowledge you need is in the episodes. The Old Testament, which the old the the these false teachers and preachers are using, is because they want to blind you. The more you preach the Old Testament, the more you become blind. And this is the reason why they, they get stuck in the Old Testament because it is the only the, it is only the Old Testament they used to steal from people. And they, because the Old Testament blind the people, they can't see. But when we preach Jesus and we explain Jesus and we talk Jesus and we explain the episode, the people's eyes open. So as you can see, as I preach the gospel through Christ, through the lens of Christ, your eyes begin to see the meaning of python but when i keep on when i go i run to the old testament and i keep on quoting malachi your heart will become blinded so i can use the old testament to rob you because i use the old testament to blind you you cannot see well if i keep on quoting the old testament because by the old testament i will blind you and i'll rob you and i'll make your life miserable but with the episode of the new testament your eyes will be open to see the revelation of the old testament and the reason behind the old testament so with the old you can understand now let's read second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 14 to 18 
But their minds were made dull for this day, and the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ it is taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit amen I love this scripture so much look at it he said but their mind were blinded for unto this day remain the same ignorance or the same veil on taking away in the reading in the reading in the reading of the old testament have you ever wondered why this minister i never like i always tell you i don't respect minister who, who are all the time stuck in the old testament because they are blind themselves the bible tells me that the reading of the old testament blind the people their hearts but the reading of jesus opens the people their heart to understand so the more we they, they point the people to the old testament and that's the reason why you see these ministers all the time about old testament old testament old testament because even themselves they are blind that's why jesus said the blind leads the blind the bible said from verse 15 said but even unto these days when moses is read the veil is upon their hearts they cannot understand this is the reason why we are battling with religious people they can't understand what I am saying now because that's what you, you can see how ignorant people say, Oh, it is you know, only thing you know is about old, new, 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 new. Go to the old. The Bible says, When I read the old, I will get blinded, but when I read the new, my heart will be open. So I'll rush to the new so that my heart will open to understand the old. To understand the old testament, you need Jesus. You need a revelation of Christ to open your mind to understand the Old Testament. That's why the Bible says, And Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. If you don't understand Christ, if you don't understand the gospel, you can't explain the Old Testament. It is impossible. So these are preachers, you know, all the time. They cannot let go tithing because they refuse the episodes the spirit of revelation is not in their heart and verse 16 he said nevertheless when the person shall run to jesus that veil and that ignorance shall be taken away if your hearts can be open to the teachings today the old testament being used on you to rob you your eyes shall be open to understand that you have been robbed by the using of the old testament not me i'm not the one saying paul said if you read the old testament your heart will be blinded why you need to understand the new you need to understand and have revelation of christ to understand the old testament because the old testament doesn't have the power to give you understanding but the new episodes which is full of the spirit will open your eye to understand the entire bible and he continued to say from Proverbs 7, he said, Now the Lord, our Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is, there is the liberty. But when you are stuck in the Old Testament, you'll be blind, and that's why they use the Old Testament to rob you. So the word veil or ignorance simply means curse. So lack of understanding is equal to living in bondage, which will make you fall in the hand of men filled with greediness. This is why the Son of God came, and he gave us light. So we can understand everything in the Old Testament. If you are a believer and you are in Christ and you have the Spirit of Christ in you, you should have the power to explain the entire Bible. That's what the Bible says. It said, when we come and when we run to the Lord, He opens our hearts to understand the Scriptures. So we who embrace the truth with all humility of the Spirit of God, grow in accurate knowledge abundantly because knowledge like i said is a blessing i wonder why people run away from knowledge they don't sit under knowledge knowledge is your blessing your blessing is not a car it's not a house it's not a baby because one day you die and leave all this thing but one thing you will die and go with is knowledge jesus called knowledge the secret of the kingdom and it is being hidden 
from their ignorance. And those who don't have it, he said the letter they have will be taken from them. So when you open to knowledge, go deeper because knowledge is worth. Now, lastly, read Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Now, when I said paying tithe is living in a curse, because tithing is a law, all right? It's part of 613 laws, okay? Now, if you choose to pay tithe, which is not part of our covenant, it means you fall under the Levite order or you fall under Moses' commandment, which means if you are paying tithe, then you need to go back and obey the 612 law you left behind. If you take one to obey, then you must obey the 612. If you refuse to obey the 612, it means you are breaking a law, which means you are cursed. That's what Galatians 3.10 is saying here. Now let's read Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 to conclude our message. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, as it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue or to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteousness shall lead by faith. Amen. Do you understand what the scripture says? For as many are as the works of the law are under a curse, and tithing is the law. We saw that last time the teaching we made on part one. It is the law, and the Bible said, "As many are as the way are, are listen for as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse." And tithing is one of the system of tithing laws, and the Bible said, "It is written, curse is everyone that does not continue." Not in all things which were written under the law. So if you choose to tithe, you must obey the rest of the season at 12 law. Because if you don't continue in all the things the law demanded, the Bible say you are under a curse. So now you understand why I said paying tithe is living in a curse. It's because you can't, if you pick tithe, then you need to obey the rest of the law. If you are not obeying the rest of the law, you put yourself under a curse. Now, let me read uh, James chapter 2 quickly. Uh, 10 and 11 said, James chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 in NIV, but she said, For whosoever keep the whole law and yet stumbles at one point is guilty of breaking all of the law. So if you choose to pay tithe, you must also choose. To obey the 613 laws now if you choose to pay tithe and refuse to obey the rest you are cursed why because the book of galatians chapter 3 verse 10 says for it is written curse is everyone that continue not in all things and james said if you obey one and break the other you are cursed so paying tithes and refusing to obey the season at 12 you are still living a life of a curse because tithing is established under a law under moses the the reign of moses so you can't pay tithe and not obey the season at 12 law this is why you put yourself in a curse because the bible says curse is everyone who refused to continue in the rest of the law by said the just the righteous people, the believers, shall live the life of faith, not the not the life of law. So, guys, as we see through the scriptures, we understand that the law of Jesus and that our the new covenant, there is no law that says we must pay tithe. Therefore, you need to reject anyone who comes with a tithing mentality. And we saw that the scripture says, tithe must be taken from a spoil. And if you don't have any spoil, you have no tithe to pay. And we've seen that reading the Old Testament will only make you blind. But when you come to Jesus, you open your eye to understand the scriptures. Any question?